one of the wildest tour stories I had was um, I was doing this show with Dave Navarro and when we were doing the mashup shows on, down in Orlando, there was this kid and uh, his name was Julian. And I'd known him for years. He used to follow us around. I mean, this is going way back. I mean, damn it, to teenager days. He'd always come in flossing, rolling, tour buses, all this crazy stuff. And so I never thought anything out of it. So I haven't seen him in years. He comes running in to the club in, in Blue Martini in Orlando. Full security, everything. I'm like, yo, what up? Oh, we haven't seen everything. It's a little fun. And then um, I had to be in Vegas the next day to do my residency at Ditch Fridays. So he's like, yo, he goes, I'm going to Vegas anyway. We'll take my mom's plane and we'll go. So I'm like, bet, I'll, I'll go private instead of going to the airport, no doubt. So we set up all this stuff and it was me, him, his security and um, uh, my tour manager. We get to Signature um, Airport, you know, the, the executive airport or whatever. and. All of a sudden, the, the plane is late or something wasn't right or something with the pilot or something. And it was a little fishy here and there, but I didn't think nothing of it because I've seen this kid a million times and he balls like crazy. We're sitting here, it's like three in the morning. And now I'm like getting real nervous because I had to be at the pool. The phone rings and the lady from the executive, she's like, who's Julian? And he grabs the phone and then he hangs up. He hangs up, he says, oh, there's something wrong with the plane. The pilot's late, blah, 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 blah. He turns around and starts flipping at the lady at the, at the thing. I want my plane here now. I need a plane. You get it here. They didn't check this kid's ID. It's supposedly Frank Sinatra's grand, great grandson, right? That's what I thought he was. I don't know. I don't check it out. You know, I meet so many people. He flips on the lady at the thing. He signs one piece of paper. They had a freaking G4 sitting on the tarmac in 15 minutes, warmed up, ready to go. We got on the plane, flew to Vegas got off, all these cars are waiting for us. And then when I'm in Vegas, my cousin was there and things just started not to like line up. Like I was like, everything was a little weird. We're sitting in my, my, my hotel and we were watching this documentary on the dude um, that was running around the Hamptons saying that he was Rockefeller. And he's like, yeah, see, this gives people like uh, me a bad name. You know, they're using my family names and this and that. Meanwhile, long story short, he was a straight up con artist that people like wanted by the police the whole line. I never, you know, got questioned about it, thank God. I mean, I talk about it because it's a funny story, but we literally took, a, well, I, I didn't. He literally took this freaking plane and we flew and we hijacked the freaking private jet, I guess you could call it. But that was one of the sickest stories ever. Like, I couldn't believe it because we seen him on the news. He took my cousin down for 130 grand on his black heart. He said that he lost his black card, that he he would link his butt. And I'm like, when I called him up, I'm like, yo, when I, I had to go to Cancun and I was like, yo, Joey, don't give this dude no, I don't, something's not right. Like I wasn't, sure enough, I get a phone call. I'm like, yo, we're having a great time. I'm doing this. And they're like, he's like, yeah, he, he linked his card to mine and he bought all this and all that and took my cousin for 130 grand. He got it all back because obviously the kid was, he was a really good car. I was like, yes, I don't know. That was like, I'll never forget that, dude. I was just like, it was the most bizarro story, but he's like locked up now or something for life, like in Houston or something, because he was like taking advantage of old people and messed up. It's a crazy world. I mean, so many crazy people. <laughs> I come my life blessing every day, man. You know, from family, my kids and all that good stuff. But my professional career, I, I don't, there isn't much that I have been privy to, man. In this short life, man, from even from meeting Mike Prince, and there was an actual bomb threat in the hotel. And this was right when I joined Public Enemy, so I'm shook. They didn't find anything. Talking to Chuck, I was like, Chuck, man, did you hear there's a bomb threat in the hotel? He's like, oh, that's nothing, Lord. Remember Flavor in 87, there was a bomb under the stage. Flavor's like, yeah, boy. So we'll go over to the studio, Broken Complex Studios, and we just smoked out like crazy. And he came by and just, we cut like a couple records and they both, went on my Hoppa and Friends project like immediately. We were on the radio in New York City, which is incredibly influential, but at the same time, we were consummate fans. I mean, the reason why we wanted to do this show was based out of us being such fans and wanting to share our love with as many people as possible. 